Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, like I promised. I'm coming at you with another video. My name is Jewel. If this is the first time to my channel, I am going to share with you my education vlog as I go through the two courses this semester. I am a student at SNHU, Southern New Hampshire University, and I am looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> I'm looking over here. I should be looking over there. Anyway, I am a student at SNHU University, which is Southern New Hampshire University. And I am taking two classes this semester. I am finishing up my bachelor's degree in communications, new media. And this semester I am taking social media marketing and I am taking strategic storytelling. Today's vlog is about my second course which is strategic storytelling and in this class we are learning how to be strategic in our communication using creative writing and our elements of creative writing to draw people into the story as we present the information to make it more engaging and interesting we're using the uh, book by Murray Nossel. I'm going to pronounce his name correctly. Murray Nossel. And the book is titled The Power of Strategic Communication. Let me pull that up here. Actually, that's on a different screen. So let me go over to this screen and share with you. Murray Sanders. Let me get here. Just bear with me for just a moment as I prepare the screen. I was not, um, I prepared it. And Welcome to Sarder TV. I'm Stephanie Haney, and today we're sitting down with Murray Nossel, the author of. Here we go, Murray Nossel. So let me share this screen with you. This is Murray Nossel, and the book we're using is powered by, powered by storytelling. Um, we are using a version through the uh, McGraw Hill is the publisher on the version that we're using, and this is Murray and his uh, co-author of uh, another story but they they blend together and um, and they met each other in grade school years ago i'll go over more of that later on just wanted to touch on that real quick so that way you know where i'm at so we're going to be looking at today just real quick is i'm going to walk you guys through my school and the first module that i'm working on and there's a couple of announcements that my professor has sent to me this week each some some professors send an announcement every day some do it once a week some do it every other day each professor has their own way of doing it this particular professor she has sent me two announcements so far and the second one I really want to just kind of dig into because it was packed full of some information that got my head uh, thinking about some things and I wanted to share those things with the group so I'm going to pull up my module one and get onto that screen and we are going to chit chat a little bit about that all right let me switch over all right so what you're looking at here is module the screen for module one and the way the school, this is your first time um, watching one of my videos, I usually like to show you what the module has and just kind of touch on some of the key points. So as you see, I've already done four out of five, which uh, that's good. Today's Wednesday and our discussions do tomorrow. So in this module, the learning objectives are identify the major communication theories related to storytelling, explain the factors that lead to miscommunication, identify effective communication strategies for storytelling, 
and identify communication goals and purposes for storytelling. Now, Paul, or I want to say Paul, it's Murray. Murray does an excellent job at explaining the factors that lead to miscommunication when he and Paul do their discussion on uh, the TED Talk. I, I need visuals to help me understand abstract concepts. And a lot of times in the classes that I've taken, that is one of the biggest hurdles I have is getting a visual to the abstract concepts. And so a lot of times I will just dig, 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 dig on the internet until I can get enough information to make a visual image in my head to understand these abstract concepts. And I believe that's the purpose of storytelling is to help people get a visual of the abstractness of either whether it be data, whether it be helping them understand the mission, giving them context, something to, to visualize and see in the mind's eye helps pull people into the story, helps heighten the engagement. That's my thoughts on that one. Going forward on the next part, um, we have the textbook that we have reading, the introduction and the power um, chapter one, which I've already read those two things. In the chapter one, as you can see here, the nat the narrative approach to storytelling. This is something that Murray Nori designed to help teach people how to do better storytelling. And from my understanding and the research that I've done about him, he is well known in the business uh, arena for helping companies learn how to tell better stories with data and the information to help them reach the, their mission. We have reading in the communication in the real world chapters, uh, 1.2. We have the encyclopedia of communication theory stories and storytelling. Uh, we also have the sage encyclopedia of communication research methods Fisher narrative paradigm and then how miscommunication happens. That's a video and interesting, very interesting. Okay. How to avoid it. And then we have three type, three types of goals you should set this year, communicating with a purpose, a cause of miscommunication, misunderstanding. And then we have chat support tips, six ways to conquer the negativity bias, a better way to argue about politics and an encyclopedia of communication theory, narrative, narratology. Interesting. So each of these pieces has a link and we, um, I usually bounce around when I do my readings depends on what I want to tackle first. Some of these items I have read in previous courses. So this is a refresher. The encyclopedia of communication theory, story in uh, storytelling. I have, let me see if I've read this one before it's loading. It's thinking. And it doesn't look like it. No, this looks like something new. Okay. It doesn't look like it. I like, I like the references that the school gives. They make sure they really pack in enough information for you to be able to understand these concepts and theories that they're transferring to you. Like I said, 
some of times I can read through, I'm good. Other times, not so good. I wanted to go over, as you may have noticed when I was looking at this, at the top here, we've got this menu bar. Let me switch over. I'm talking about it, I'm not showing you. At the top here, we've got the menu bar. As you can see, the course, of, um, the title of the course, a little home box here. This here is the grid that opens up. These are all the courses I've already taken. I like to pin the two courses that I'm working on at the top. So I push this little pin button here, as you can see. So it pins these two courses at the top. Then we have here, if we've got mail, I don't want to log out. We've got mail. Uh, if we've got a discussion alert, somebody has commented on one of our discussions. That's where we would go here. And then here, the little bell is notifications. And five minutes ago, APA style requirements announcement posted by my professor. So just to give you a quick look, looks here. My professor for communications 326, she sent me a message on Monday. She sent me a message uh, yesterday and then she sent me a message today. So she likes to communicate daily on the announcements. And what she's saying on this APA style requirements is getting, helping me get comfortable with APA style um, seventh edition. I have been working with the APA style uh, format throughout my course. Uh, this is a great refresher, but I am very familiar with it. I like that she um, sent this and it's important. I, the key things for APA is about plagiarism, being professional and preparation. Now I, I addressed this in a, another video, but I'm going to, let me open up a window here real quick and go back over here. Uh, I use Evernote and I like Evernote. I'm going to switch the screen down because I want to show you. Let me see. I'm going to minimize those so we can not get distracted. And I'm going to switch back over to this screen so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is Evernote and I use Evernote in all my classes. I, I started using this out um, basic on a recommendation from a YouTuber and to help me make notes. I don't do well with as far as reading from my notes. I, I'll do them as touch points, but I don't read verbatim for my notes. But anyway, one of the things that I do for classes, as you can see over here, each class, I start a notebook. And one of the main things that I do in each class is I make a citations notes. What that is, any time I read something, I do a, I create the citation in APA style. And APA style has two parts. The first part, when you use Anything from the material that you're reading, you will do what's called an in-text citation, as you can see up here. Um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Let's see. Uh, a little bit bigger, maybe, maybe so. Let's see. Mm, it's not coming in very well. I'm trying to make it bigger for you. Zoom in so you can... You can see, but it's not working the way I, I want to. And I'm not real familiar and I don't want to, I see my programs already uh, messing up over here. But anyway, um, in this particular uh, Communications 329, the book that we were using was by Hartley, Burgess, and Br Bruns. And the top line here is the APA... Uh, reference citation format. And then on this line is the in-text citation format. So as I am writing, I would just cut and paste. 
That way I wouldn't have to worry about trying to find where my information was. So that's how I use my Evernote program. I love it, love it, love it. And it just makes it easier for me. I don't have to sit here and constantly think about, oh, what do I need to do? Um, where is that citation? I, I just create it once I open the material, cut and paste as I'm reading and writing. By the time I'm done with my writing, my references are already there and text citations were there. Send on its way. Another tool I also use is Grammarly and I use Scriber, which also helps me with my APA. Um, I'll talk about those another time. So anyway, let's move on because I don't want to, I don't want to take this forever. This video, I know I like to talk a lot. I like to talk a lot. So we're going back over here. This was, um, so the announcement for her APA style. Now she sent me another announcement uh, yesterday and it's pertaining to the writing center workshops, which are available through our school. I really like those. This one, what is strategic storytelling is the one I wanted to get to because she really does a great job breaking down the dynamics of this course, the, the key essence of what I'm going to be doing in this course. And as you can see here, um, she addresses me by Jewel. I'm wondering if I'm the only student. I don't think I am, but <laughs> the question did come up into my mind. But a couple things I wanted to touch on. Let me pull up my notes here from this particular um, piece as I was reading through it. Uh, it was generating a lot of thoughts um, to me. So she goes into what is strategic communication first, and then we talk about the strategic storytelling. So from what I'm reading, the definition of strategic communication is it's purposeful. It's uh, purpose is to help organizations fulfill their mission. And one of the examples that came to me, even though they're a smaller organization is YouTubers, YouTubers get on YouTube every day with a purpose to gain subscribers and communicate and engage with their current subscribers. Therefore, a lot of them use storytelling to convey the information and make it engaging. Vloggers, especially, uh, there's a lot of vloggers out there that really do a great job with all the special effects and, and things like that. And I thought that was a good example. Then uh, what are some tools learned uh, within this course and getting people to support our, our, let me back up. What are some ways to use the tools learned in this course? And one of the things that popped into my mind is getting uh, people to, support something you're doing this month is mental health awareness month and one of the campaigns that i'm putting together uh is to uh advocate for mental health awareness and the importance of staying mentally healthy as well as physically healthy they go hand in hand but a lot of times we just forget about the mental health part and when you're under a lot of stress, a lot of pressures from school and work and relationships, you need to make take make take care of this mental health piece right here. Uh, so, and also the course is teaching strategy and research to create a story. I don't know, you know, what what uh, story we're going to be telling yet. Although I know that we're going to be doing research to help us build the story. And uh, as a student, I will uh, engage with creative and analytical side of my brain. And the left side of the brain, I got this little picture right here. Um, this is from Health Inc. I, I like this. But they talk about the left and the right side of the brain. So the left side 
of the brain is about thinking in words, sequencing, linear thinking, mathematics, facts, logic. And then you have right side of the brain, which is feelings, visualization, imagination, intuition, rhythm, holistic thinking, and the arts, the creative side of our brain. So we're going to be converging both sides as we develop in our strategic storytelling um, venture here. And one of the things that came to mind, I have been reading a book. I just finished it by this is Indra Nui. She is an Indian American business executive, former CEO of PepsiCo. And I stumbled upon her looking for women, uh, who were, who had broken through the glass ceiling and I was, uh, captivated by her, uh, several videos she had done. I liked her humor and I like how she was very transparent about some of the, um, trials and tribulations of becoming who she was. And so I just finished her book. And when I was, uh, looking at this strategic storytelling in the description, I thought about some of the stories she told in the book. And what triggered this was this part of the um, announcement here, which says we're going to be talking about culture and how culture uh, mixes in with storytelling. And what I liked about um, her stories is how she connected her life living in India and her life living in America and, and that convergence that had to happen as she went through school and career and a family and so forth, so on. And so when I, I was reading the part about how we're going to learn about different cultures and why it's important to learn about these cultures, I thought about the story she told when she worked for a company and they had to introduce women's feminine hygiene products into the Indian culture. And thankfully, she had the understanding of that culture to help with that project. I believe that if they did not have her on that project or anyone of in Indian American um, culture, that company that she worked for would have struggled attempting to introduce women's feminine hygiene products into the culture the um from the story the country did not talk about women and their needs uh because of their monthly cycle i could never imagine but she had to had to introduce that they had to look at packaging they had to look at how they could open the discussion because it was so taboo and even still women had to go and wait until people left the store and then go up to the clerk and then the clerk would pull the products out from behind the counter because they could not be displayed in the store. Now, mind you, this is, you know, I, I know I take it for granted, I go in the store, I need whatever I need. I get it off the shelf. I could not imagine having to wait for someone to tell me I had to, you know, whisper to a clerk, male clerk, Hey, I need this. So, I, that when I read the part about how we're going to be focusing on culture and incorporating that into our storytelling, that story resonated to me with me 
um, very on the highest level. So this is what we're going to be learning. And there's more. This is a very meaty announcement. So I don't want to go through all of it yet. I just wanted to show you that this is how some professors help us achieve our education goal by giving us things, these nuggets, this is what's included in strategic storytelling, what's not included, strategic storytelling example. They'll implant videos into the announcements and, you know, give us some more meat and potatoes. I mean, this is great. I love when professors do stuff like this. Even if they don't do stuff like this, if they give us uh, little tidbits throughout the week, you know, I appreciate all of that. I'm very self-sufficient. If I need the information, I'm going to go find it. Like I wanted those videos that I saw of Murray. I went to YouTube to find those. When I read the books, I like to find the authors if I can on YouTube. Normally, I don't really have a problem with finding them. I always believe that the authors are trying to promote those books, so they're going to do some type of interview or they're going to do some type of webinar that kind of lets you inside as to the mechanics of making the book. And when I read when I view the videos, it brings me a little closer to the author and understanding why they created that book and what I should be pulling out of that book. So I appreciated, uh, you know, I got a chance to watch several videos or yeah, several videos that Murray did and the Ted talk with him and Paul was just amazing. I will leave a link to that Ted talk in the discussion because it was one of those stories that makes you really connect and understand. And maybe if you are a YouTuber and storytelling is something you've struggled with, or you've been trying to figure out how to bring storytelling into your videos, watching that Ted talk should help you for sure. So with that, I am going to wrap this up so I can get it posted and I will be making my next video and posting it Monday. I'm two a week. I'm, I'm working on two a week. I may, I may, I'm not going to make no promises. I may do a special video on, um, Friday that, sums up some of the discussions that we talked about in, uh, for this week, the discussions aren't done yet. They don't get done until, or the, the final deadline is Thursday. I've already done mine, but I want to wait till a lot of my other students bring in their discussion and kind of generate some more thoughts from both, both classes. So that is something I'm planning on. But like I said, I don't want to promise because it doesn't end until Thursday. So it's going to end Thursday night. So that means I would need to make a video if I want to have it posted by Friday morning. And it's going to depend on if I get through all the discussions Thursday night, what I summarize, but I will do my best to do that, but I'm not going to make any promises just yet. I'm trying to get into this rhythm to be more consistent with my videos. And since I'm doing a vlog three times a week, seems pretty cool to work with. Um, but I don't want to overwhelm myself because studies can get crazy, man. Okay. Thanks for watching my video. If you like this video, subscribe. If you like my channel, subscribe, share, and hey, let's learn something. All right. Peace, everybody. Have a great day.